Yo, hey everybody, Joey Mesa here, and uh, in this video I'm building this super sweet Trek Domani SLR. It's a Project One bike, so it's um, custom paint, and uh, you've got some customization of the part packages and things like that. So this particular bike is going to be using the SRAM, the ETAP, the Axis it's the axis force group so it's a double chain ring up front and then it's the 12 speed uh, axis uh, set up there so pretty sweet bike um, so just unboxing it here and going through what all you comes with it and uh, got some sweet travel discount coupons that as far as in the little parts box there we've got all our you know it's a tubeless set up so we got our sealant we've got disc and brake rotor lock ring got a plethora of little uh, accessory mounts you can run this kind of locks in with the stem it's a little blender stem thing so it's got a little cable management piece there but you can run dual you know computer light computer GoPro whatever you got fender optional fender mounts fender rack mounts uh, yeah you can pretty much pretty versatile setup there to run whatever got a free hub spacer another head sub spacer didn't use any of that and then we're going to use uh, some of these front derailleur shims got our barb and olive for the hydraulic hoses which we did use those and we've got our uh, ISO speed pads and handlebar tape there and then we've got our seat and seat posts there so uh, as far as the ETAP stuff uh, it comes with the charger it comes with a couple batteries uh, so we got our the, like I say the charger and then the, the uh, little USB cord there so only has one charger but we've been doing so much uh, Quite a, we've got a few ETAP bikes on the floor, so we've got multiple chargers on hand. So I just engaged two chargers, plugged it into the one of the computers there, and so it'll be a little orange light. And when it turns, uh, I think green, it's all good to go. So while that was charging, we're getting the bike unboxed and checking everything out. Uh, these are these Project One bikes are really boxed pretty well. Got a lots of velcro and these little pads that little pad right there I ended up use keeping that and just using it uh, a lot of the shots there that I was holding my camera with or the little phone worked pretty well for that just on a side note but uh, yeah otherwise it's all in you know, these nice little pads with velcro straps everything's padded up real nice so there didn't didn't have any scratches or anything got this little checklist there that they have I guess that they do when they're putting the bike together so you know all the project one bikes they're going to be painted and all the parts and assembly and all that's done in Waterloo Wisconsin so yeah it's pretty sweet I'm um, just getting it all unpackaged here and getting ready to put it up in the in the work stand there so um, usually we'll keep all these old all the packing and stuff the little velcro straps and pads because we do quite a few box bikes for shipping for whatever um, later on so we usually save all that stuff but anyway I'm gonna put the seat post in first to put it up in the work stand and that's the back side of the seat post and it's got kind of a little expanding wedge type system there within the seat post there so there's a little beveled uh, section there aluminum and I think all these pieces are combination of metal and or aluminum and steel so uh, the um, the threads on th on this piece here it's a little five millimeter bolt little hex key and then it's the threads are actually reversed so you're gonna turn it uh, counterclockwise to essentially to thread the bolt in and then you'll turn it clockwise to it actually threads the bolt out but when you have it in the stand you're just looking at it as you know you want to tighten the seat post you just turn it clockwise like you would a standard bolt so 
Um, basically what it's doing is just pushing that little wedge piece into the front edge of the frame. Um, I went ahead and just put some grease on all this stuff. You know, that's one of those things, if there's not grease, I mean, for one, it can not quite get tight enough. It can kind of bind up before it actually gets tight enough. It feels like it's tight, but it may not be. And it just, you know, avoids potential creaking in the future, avoids potential uh, disassembly of things kind of stuck together, especially when you're dealing with a lot of dissimilar metals over time, get a little water or something in there, it kind of can fuse everything together and cause some difficulty on the disassembly so got everything all all the critical pieces there greased up and uh, yeah now we're just ready to put it into the bike I went ahead and backed it out just enough to where that bolt wasn't protruding to the other side you get that little tail on the on the end and so there's a slot on the frame and if you have that seat post fully extended it kind of covers up the bottom end of that slot so water and stuff doesn't get down inside the frame but using some uh, little the carbon uh, like fiber grip stuff there so uh, it's good to use this on carbon seat posts or you know any any carbon fiber components carbon on carbon aluminum on carbon and then even like dropper posts, we'll use them generally for that, so you don't have to get that get the torque super tight. Um, but anyway, yeah, getting it cinched down. You can see that slot there in the back of the frame, and now we can uh, got it just hooked on. But we'll got it put in there with a nice soft microfiber towel, so it doesn't scratch the seat post and. Just getting her all unpackaged this and uh so this particular frame it's painted in the like the women's track factory racing kind of team colors um so yeah it's a pretty slick looking bike it's hard to tell but it's kind of a maybe a pearlescent kind of a metal flake color under the white and then as well as the blue colors there so it's a pretty slick looking uh paint job overall especially in that sunlight that's shining through um, but yeah so we've got the uh, like I say it's the force uh, axis 12 speed in the rear so anyway one thing that was it's kind of interesting on this bike there they've gone on the SLR SLR frames they've kind of done away from the BB 90 they've gone to this T47 so it's got a threaded cup but once I started really looking at it, kind of one thing that intrigued me was this. It's got a, actually a GXP crank where I would have just assumed it would have been a dub crank. So anyway, I just wanted to go ahead and take, I hadn't really, we've gotten several of these T47 bikes in, but I haven't, I've yet to, I just wanted to, out of curiosity, take one apart and see what it was all about. Uh, you can see that's pretty tight. I don't know. Habini, if you're watching this video, you got to get those things, that GXP crank tight if you want it to work correctly. So anyway, taking it apart here and uh, just see what it's all about. There you got your torque spec on the actual spindle bolt is 48 to 54 newton meters. The actual outer cap there, a lot of people get confused with that. The 10 millimeter bolt, that's that's just the your uh, kind of your one key release kind of like your crank puller that's built in so anyway there's our uh, we got the the 22 millimeter on the on the uh, non-drive side and 24 on the drive side um, so it's the just the wheels manufacturing bottom bracket which is pretty nice bottom bracket that I've had personally really good luck with uh, so it's uh, the that spider interface there it's you can run your cork or whatever but those are adaptable to dub gxp whatever so that's the little uh t47 it's just a threaded insert there that they've got into the into the frame so kind of curious long term how that's going to work out um i know a lot of uh kind of a long story for another video but the carbon uh, or the aluminum sleeves or aluminum bits 
fused into the carbon frames typically long term to I don't know I haven't seen that work out well but we'll see how this see how these go long term it seemed all really straight and um, you know I, I put it back in here and then putting the crank in I ended up taking out one of the little they had two Dell rim spacers and then the wavy washer spacer which at first it seemed like there it might have been side loading a little bit onto that dust cap so I took one off and it was still pushing right you know the night nice up against that dust cap to hold it in place but that thing spun super smooth so I feel like it's uh, it's pretty straight um, I don't know I like GXP I don't I've used it on quite a few of my own bikes and never had an issue with it but I'm just I don't know out of curiosity I just wonder why they used a GXP instead of a a dub since they're using that T47 but anyway messing around with all that unpacking and playing with the crank we got our batteries all charged so we'll stick those on here in a bit um, so we're just getting it kind of pieced together and getting the bars on and I'm um, just kind of looking at the cable you know the way the cables route and I was going to use just uh, this one that has basically our I looked on the floor to see what some of the other bikes our other ETAP bikes how we had them set up we had one that had nothing on it and then another that had the little cable management piece there I thought it looked kind of clean in the center part of the stem so that was the route I, I decided to take but you know we've got there was one out there that had the the one computer mount and then I think there was another that had a couple but I chose to just go with the the single no accessory mount at the time and then one cable holder but obviously the cables are a little long so we're gonna go ahead and shorten these hoses and basically you'll need a 10 millimeter and an 8 millimeter little just open in wrench there you put the 10 on the the uh, piece that pivots up and down there that you basically just threads the compression nut into so it's pretty simple setup um, if you do it right you can angle the piece that had the 10 millimeter flats on it you just kind of keep it upward so fluid doesn't leak out and then once you take your hose off like this if you just hold it upwards you know generally you're not going to get any fluid leakage so um, I did a little one little extra thing here this is this is one of the little pieces that you would typically you're using if you're routing a hose it's like a little piece that comes with a reverb C post but we've got a few laying around I like them for just blocking off the hose to keep fluid out um, you can also use the end of a spoke works pretty well just an old spoke cut the tip off and you can make an L bend if you want or just leave it straight but just trying to keep the fluid from leaking out and so what I'm gonna do we've got this little cover here got it off and uh, so the the hose was kinda slapping around inside the frame I noticed so I'm gonna put a little uh, some cable some hose damping foam over it and so you can see the hose there it slips down into the frame there's a little holder there that it clips into but pretty much from that point up you know you hit a bump hit some bumpy roads and that stuff will kind of vibrate around there and in the, inside the frame so um, just gonna put some of that uh, we got some Jaguar internal housing damper foam st stuff there big old roll of it that we got a little while back and just gonna cut a short little section here just mock it up and snip that off and then we'll just slip it down inside the frame um, yeah, I mean, if you got a, a frame with that hose that slaps around, this stuff is definitely will quiet that noise down for sure. I need to do it on my pivot, my vault. It's got a kind of the same situation, same brakes, and it kind of slap that hose slaps around inside of the frame. So I need to do it on mine pretty soon. But anyway, just work it down in there. We'll push pull, work it down into place, and. Uh, the hole in the frame the top there behind the head tube is big enough so you can see where it's setting just in front of the, where it clips in and then you can see it just below the uh, where it enters the frame there so yeah definitely a lot quieter now so go ahead and hook that piece up um, but anyway we're now we're gonna hook our 
got my cable, my hose shortened a little bit. Did basically repeated the same thing with the front brake, but uh, this is the little uh, barb piece. It threads in on the uh, on SRAM. It's just I think it's a little eight millimeter or eight or T8 I believe. It threads it in, and then there's a little threaded section on top with your little olive piece. Uh, there's a little reverse thread section there so you get your little red olive there that just you reverse thread that on so once you put your compression nut it uh, wants to tighten that but forgot to put my compression nut on so I'm going to take that back off slide our compression nut on and then put the little red olive back on which took the compression nut off forgot about that to put the foam on so got everything here in the correct orientation the correct order and now we're just gonna uh, make sure we get our cable routed how we want and then just thread it into the little uh, female in there with the two 10 millimeter flats on it and if you do it all correctly normally you can do this and I don't know most of the time I never even have to re-bleed the, the brakes but if you do you can just typically do a quick uh, top bleed and so it's pretty quick uh, this particular situation, I was able to do uh, do both front and rear brakes without having to bleed anything. So, um, yeah, just getting it cinched down. Um, you want to tighten that thing to uh, eight newton meters. Um, you'll need to use like a little crow's foot and a little crow's foot adapter piece, and then you can uh, you know just hook that right up to your little torque wrench at a 90 degree if you want to get real specific on that 8 newton meters there those definitely need to be snug so yeah that looks pretty clean there got them both cinched down got our little uh, cable cover piece got to put that back on so um, yeah that turned out pretty nice so we got our in the little compartment here, rather than carrying a seat bag under your seat, they've made room inside your down tube where it's got a little bag in there where you can put a spare tube, CO2s, tools, whatever. It all just fits in the down tube now. And your bottle cage will mount on top of this piece. There's just that little lever that takes it on and off. So it's pretty pretty slick little system there. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and put our batteries on. Um, I didn't get super specific on this video on uh, all the gear adjustments. I'm going to go through the sync up and some other things. But I've got, I don't know, three or four other videos showing how to fine-tune adjust the SRAM E-Tap or Axis, both of those. So they're, I mean, they're honestly, I would say they're easier to adjust than mechanical derailers or at least the same. Um, anyway, to sync everything up, I'll just start here at the rear derailleur. You hold that button, keep holding it down, and then when you start seeing flashing, then it's in the sync mode. So on each uh, shift lever, there's a little button on the back side of the paddles. Just hold that in, and if you just hold it down, you'll see the blinking increase each time it's syncing up. So we got our front paddle, or the... Uh, the right side synced up and I'm holding down the, the left side here and you'll see it flash rapidly again. So we got both our shifters synced up. There's another button there on the front derailleur. Rapid flash, so we're all good to go. Hit the button again and uh, we're all everything's communicating with each other at this point. So we just got to fine tune it, adjust it. Pretty simple process on this electronic uh, stuff there but um, you know it's a front derailleur it's basically like the SRAM mechanical yaw system you got the two lines there and you want to just line that up with the put it up in the big ring or whatever and um, get those lined up so I use my little the uh, it was pretty crooked from the uh, the braze on mount there so we lined that up and then I just adjusted my uh, the high limit screw which is uh, on the upper end there's a uh, two screws one for the high end low end the higher one is the high limit screw it's on top so 
Get these two little plate or the plates. I use the narrowest one. This kind of like your stabilization or your backing screw, similar to the DI2 Shimano stuff where they use a little screw and a plate. This just uses a little plastic wedge that you stick in there. So we got our big ring in the front, small ring in the rear, a little clearance, good to go. Again, if you want a little more specifics on fine-tuning, adjusting these derailleurs. I've got some other videos that would go a little more in-depth on that, but kind of sped through this one because this is a pretty in-depth, long-winded video. Uh, so we're putting our disc brake rotors. This is the uh, center lock style. So we got our rotor, and it actually came, it's kind of weird, came with the Shimano center lock rotor there, so I don't know. It's kind of funny that I'm wearing a Shimano shirt in this video, and it's a SRAM-equipped bike. But, you know, I'm a pretty equal opportunity. Uh, I, you know, I like them both. They both have their pros and cons. But, you know, if you're uh, working in the bike industry and you're you totally dislike one, you know, you're kind of just doing yourself and your clientele a disservice, you know, if you know how to get both types dialed in, you know, that's going to be your way to go, I think. I don't know. But didn't realize I was going to be building this bike when I was wearing my Shimano shirt, but it's all good. Uh, so anyway, yeah, just getting our, putting in the rear wheel. It's got the uh, through axle style. So it's not really much different than a skewer, skewer style axle. You just slip it in. There's some little stops on the dropouts there and then you just thread your uh, thread your skewer through or whatever um, you know this is the it's a DT skewer so it basically just kinda like a big bolt that runs through and then uh, you know once you get it to where you want you can put it in an optimal position to get maximum torque down on it and then just pull the lever out and then position it to where it's out of the way you're good to go uh, so this one the brakes were rubbing pretty good I probably should have back you know loosened off the uh, caliper just to let that wheel go up in there easier but I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this caliper I've got notice I've got a kind of a high-vis background there so you can see it's basically off to the uh, push pretty far to the right so flat mount brake uh, they're pretty easy to adjust so we're just you know, as far as centering the caliber wise so we're just gonna break these two bolts loose here it's a little T25 Torx bolt and uh, you know from here once you got your little high-vis background it's just line it up see nice uh, you know I'm kind of just messing around with it here to show the visibility you know it's kind of like the human eye when you're looking at it a camera only sees it from one dimension so your eye is going to see it from a couple but you want to just see nice uh, yellow or whatever background color you see uh, equally on both sides so got that dialed in cinched down now we're doing our tubeless uh, tubeless tire install here this thing was already set up I just let the air out push the tire aside there were the tires were already seated up and everything right out of the box so I pushed that aside so you could see the valve stem then I went ahead and aired them back up got the tire seated let's pull the core out and then we put our sealant in kind of clearing out the chamber with some compressed air and then we're putting our valve core back in uh, air it up repeat the process for the front wheel and we're good to go as far as the tubeless setup this uh, Bond Traeger wheel it's got these Aeolus uh, uh, carbon rims on there so those things with the strips they're pretty uh, pretty foolproof as far as setting up tubeless got our little pads there the ISO zone pads and so that was basically all that was left get that get the bars wrapped and uh, bike came out pretty slick um, it's definitely light I didn't weigh it um, I would probably guess it's I don't know as it sits right here probably around 15 16 pounds or so but 
put some test ride pedals, cruised around on a little bit, and it, that thing ride with that little uh, ISO speed decoupler uh, there on the seat post, that thing, it rides like a dream. So, um, yeah, anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please consider subscribing to my channel. I've got all kinds of trick bike builds, bike tutorials, and everything else. So, anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.